Good morning and welcome to another Sunday morning with Colhorn Online. These services are, are so different from what we used to have, but we're very thankful that you've joined us this morning. Uh, like many of the changes uh, that we have seen uh, over these past weeks, there have been bad points and good points. And even our services have the same. We really miss uh, not meeting with each other just uh, to find out how people are getting on, to shake a hand or, or, or to give a hug. Um, of course, we've also lost loved ones over this time and, and even in recent days. And we haven't been able to grieve or, or to share in that sadness uh, with all those families. But there are some good points as well. We've, we've had lots of people taking part in these services, uh, people who wouldn't have maybe had that opportunity. And it's been great to have them it's been great to, 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 to see others using their, their gifts with the technology to bring these services to us these days. And for many of our young people helping with uh, children's work uh, and the Youth Fellowship still carrying on on Zoom. But one of the other great things uh, that we've really found is that there are other people who are joining us on a Sunday morning who maybe, who maybe you wouldn't have done before simply because you don't live uh, anywhere near our church or maybe it wasn't your habit uh, just to, to join on a Sunday morning. We are very welcome, particularly welcome this morning. Uh, and we'll just uh, think about those things as we listen to the, the, the psalm for today. And that psalm is Psalm 34 and verses 11 to 17. This is God's word. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. And let's just pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we are indeed able to meet together, even though we're not all in the same place. Uh, we are as your people, uh, your church, and we thank you for that. We thank you for your word this morning. Um, and we pray that you will teach us to fear, because it is in the fear of, of the Lord uh, that there is real uh, security, because you are the one who is in control. And we thank you, Lord, that, you, uh, that our righteousness uh, is not in ourselves. All the good things that we do are just as guilty as, as filthy rags. But our righteousness is in the one who died for us, who gave his life for us, and he clothes us in his righteousness. And we pray this morning, Heavenly Father, as we as we uh, listen to your word, as we as we hear those take part, that you will speak to us and help us to understand uh, a little bit more and draw a little bit closer to your son. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to uh, listen uh, to a hymn now, uh, of, uh, one of, a big favourite of ours in Kilhorn, Take My Life and Let It Be. And after that, we'll have our Bible reading from Isabel.
morning everyone. Our first Bible reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, reading the first eight verses. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the serfs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Our second Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 16. Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 16, reading to the end. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. We are now going to have a special musical medley from some of the youth of the parish. Thank you. 
teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand up on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need you every arm I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you because he Let's pray together. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for our church. Heavenly Father, we thank you indeed for the continued witness uh, of your people in Kilbourn. Uh, we thank you for Shirley and for all those who help in so many different ways. We ask you would encourage them and uh, let them know, even though we do it remotely and from our homes so often, that you, you still and so many other people appreciate what they do. And bless them as they continue in that work. We pray for all our people in Kilhorn that they would continue to remain faithful and close to God and uh, close to you uh, as they read your word and as they uh, pray together. And indeed, Heavenly Father, as we think of our church, we think of our vacancy. Uh, help us to trust and to have that sure hope uh, that the right man will be appointed. Uh, you are teaching us to be patient. We just pray for Bishop McClay and for the nominators that we would be wise uh, and know the right things to do at this difficult time. And we also pray for our land. Indeed, Heavenly Father, we pray for uh, the leaders uh, of this land, those who are in Stormont. And we pray that they have opportunity and difficult decisions to make perhaps in these days considering the abortion bill. We just pray that those who would claim your name and those who would meet there would be brave and would take a stand for the children yet unborn who cannot uh, do anything for themselves. We need we pray Heavenly Father that Northern Ireland would be a place different. Different not because we have fight uh, as we were in the past but that we would be a place that is different because we we value the, the life of those unborn children. And we pray for our, our, our leaders in storm that they would be wise and brave in these days. We think of our wider country and of our government and our health services as they have many difficult decisions to make concerning this virus. We pray that they wouldn't be making short-term political decisions, but that they would think of, of the people and the health of the people uh, and that they would be wise in all that they do, and that there would be those there who would seek your will and your guidance. And indeed, we have any Father, we think of our wider world. We see so many different things around us that would say that the world is out of control. Help people to understand in these difficult days that you are still sovereign. Uh, there's many things that may be wrong, but you've placed every leader and you're in control of everything. And this morning, we are still able to say, come, Lord Jesus, come. 
And also, Heavenly Father, we, we just pray for those who are sick at this time. We have many in our parish who are going through different treatments and who are uh, just not well uh, for one reason or another. We pray that you'll be with them. It can be lonely for them, uh, uh, with people not able to go and see them as they would like to. Pray that you'll be close to them. And we pray for wisdom and skill for those doctors and nurses as they uh, attend to them. And we would just close uh, all of our prayers this morning in the words of the grace. It's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. We're just going to hand over to David now as he brings us God's word. A few weekends ago, we celebrated BE Day. And during that weekend, the BBC showed a film called The Darkest Hour. It was the story of Winston Churchill and how he became Prime Minister at that time. It was a time of great national crisis for fear and anxiety. Hitler was moving fast across Europe. The British army was trapped and surrounded at Dunkirk. And the change of Prime Minister just seemed to add to the whole sense of chaos and crisis at that time. The whole nation was in crisis. As we come to our Bible reading this morning from Isaiah chapter 6, we also find a nation which is at a very difficult period in its history. Isaiah chapter 6, if you want to follow in your Bible uh, with me this morning, Isaiah chapter 6 begins with these words, In the year that King Uzziah died. King Uzziah had been a good king. He had reigned over Judah for 52 years. The last number of years of his reign had been more difficult. Uh, He had been smitten by leprosy as a punishment uh, for pride, uh, a punishment that came from God. But King Uzziah generally had been a good king who had reigned for a long time and achieved much. But now his reign was over. And these are the circumstances in which Isaiah the prophet has a vision. The vision that we find recorded in these words. And so this morning we want to read Isaiah chapter 6, those first eight verses, and we want to see there the vision that Isaiah saw. And we want to try to see four things that he saw in that vision. The first thing that we come to is that Isaiah saw the Lord. Let's read verses 1 to 4 together. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. So Isaiah has this amazing vision of the Lord. The first thing that we see is that he tells us that the Lord was seated upon a throne. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Remember, we've just been told that this is the year in which King Uzziah had died. Uzziah's reign of 52 years was over. He had been a well-respected king who had led Israel well. But now he was dead. He died as all earthly kings do, no matter how great they may be. Israel had lost the security that came from having Uzziah on the throne. But on Isaiah's vision, the very first thing he sees is that the Lord is seated upon a throne. And there's reassurance here for Isaiah and for the nation as a whole. Earthly kings may rise and fall, but God remains on the throne of the universe. That's the message that Isaiah has. National circumstances may change, but God never leaves his throne. He is still sovereign over all. I think that's a very encouraging message uh, for even for us this morning as we think about it. Our nation uh, is going through a crisis at the moment, uh, probably something that we have uh, never gone through uh, right back since the days of World War II. It affects all of us in very personal ways. We might have concerns about contracting coronavirus. 
Maybe we're worried about family members. Maybe we're concerned about our children and their education. Some of us perhaps wonder about the future, uh, what it will hold in terms of employment. Or maybe you own a business and you're wondering at the moment if that business will survive. In all these circumstances, real as they are, there is real encouragement for us in Isaiah chapter 6 this morning. Real encouragement from Isaiah's vision. We're shown very clearly here that God is still on the throne. None of this has taken him by surprise. So this morning, let's ask God to share Isaiah's vision with us. Ask him to show us the truth that he remains on the throne in control of this world, in control of all our personal circumstances as well. There's an old chorus uh, that puts it like this. God is still on the throne and he will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, he never will leave us alone. God is still on the throne. He never forsaketh his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. So Isaiah's vision shows him God on the throne. High and lifted up, we're told, the train of his robe filled the temple. And then in verse 2, uh, we see the heavenly beings who worship and serve God, the seraphim. These heavenly creatures draw attention uh, to something else about the Lord. They draw attention to his holiness. We see that in verse 3. They called to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now as we've said, Isaiah has seen God seated on his throne. He has seen that God is sovereign over all. And he has seen as well that God is high and lifted up, that God is almighty and all powerful. And yet these are not the things that the angels sing about. Instead, they focus on God's holiness. And now Isaiah is being shown that God is holy and perfect, completely set apart from sin. And you know that's very, very important. Because having seen the Lord, Isaiah now sees something else. The next thing in his vision is that Isaiah sees himself. We see that in verse 5. Isaiah's vision of the holiness of God now causes him to take a fresh look at himself. And he's not very happy with what he sees. Look at verse 5. Isaiah said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Whenever Isaiah sees himself in the light of God's holiness, he realises what a sinful person he is. How can he possibly stand in the presence of such a holy God? Isaiah's vision of God highlights his own sinfulness. And you know that is something that all of us would do well to see as well. It's important that we realise that our sin separates us from God. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No matter how good we might try to be, no matter how well we might try to behave, we can never measure up to the standard of God. It's simply not possible for us. Like Isaiah, all of us are simply unfit to be in the presence of God. And if we hope that one day we will share eternity with God in heaven, then we need to do what Isaiah does. We need to admit and to face up to the reality of sin in our own lives. And it's only when we come to understand the holiness of God and see God for what he is, it's only then that our own sinfulness becomes clear. Once again, like Isaiah, we need to ask God to give us a vision of himself. Now you and I may not have an actual vision of God uh, the way that Isaiah did, but in God's word we can discover God for ourselves. Passages like this one reveal to us the character of God and they help us to see how far short we fall of his standards. And Isaiah's realisation of God's holiness and his realisation of his own sinfulness leads him to cry out to God. And in doing so, Isaiah sees something else. 
The third thing that he sees in this vision. Isaiah sees God's way of forgiveness. We see that in verses 6 and 7. Whenever Isaiah admits his own sin, he admits his need of forgiveness, that forgiveness comes. Verse 6 and 7 tell us. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Whenever Isaiah sees his sin and turns to God, he finds forgiveness. God grants his forgiveness to all who humbly seek it. Where does that forgiveness come from? Well, it comes from the altar, doesn't it? It comes from the place of sacrifice. One of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. The forgiveness comes from the place of sacrifice. And the cleansing from sin that you and I need today comes from the place of sacrifice. It only can come from Calvary. For the ultimate sacrifice was made. The death there of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, makes forgiveness possible to everyone who will seek it. Listen to what Peter says in 1 Peter 2 and verse 24. He says, Jesus himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin might live to righteousness. By his stripes we are healed. In order to find forgiveness, forgiveness for your sin, you need to do what Isaiah did. You need to realise your own sinfulness before a holy God. You need to humbly ask for cleansing from that sin. And you need to trust in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, where he bore the punishment that your sin deserves. Look what the, the seraphim tell Isaiah in verse 7. Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. What wonderful words. And that promise can be yours today if you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He can take away the guilt of your sin. He can atone for it. And he can give you the forgiveness that makes you right with God. So Isaiah saw the Lord. Then he saw himself. And then he saw God's way of forgiveness. And there's one last thing that Isaiah sees. Isaiah saw his need to serve God. And we see that in verse 8. Having seen the Lord, Isaiah now hears the Lord's voice speak to him. And God speaks with a question in verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here am I, send me. God has a message for his people and he's looking for a messenger. And Isaiah doesn't hesitate. He immediately responds, here am I, send me. Now it's interesting, isn't it? He doesn't know yet what God wants him to do. He doesn't know where God wants him to go. He doesn't know what God wants him to say. But that doesn't matter. You see, Isaiah has had a vision of God. He has had a glimpse of God in all of his glory. He has sought and he has experienced God's forgiveness in his own life. And that has changed him. That has transformed him in every single way. So whenever God seeks for a servant, Isaiah is willing to be that servant, whatever it may involve for him. It's interesting, isn't it, that this great God, this almighty God who is all-powerful, wants a human person to be his messenger. God still seeks that today. He still seeks people, people like you and me, who will be his servants today. People who will share his word in a lost world. I wonder, have you had Isaiah's experience? Have you come to know this awesome God yourself have you experienced his forgiveness through the lord jesus christ well if you have then you're called to serve him you're called to share the message of his love and his forgiveness in your office on the building site 
in the school, in the hospital, wherever he places you. He seeks your response to this question. Whom will I send? Who will go for us? He wants you to go and share the message. And when you're motivated by a vision of his greatness and you've seen how awesome God is, and when you're full of thankfulness for his forgiveness, then that's the natural response, to share his message with those who need to hear it. Isaiah's vision of God had come at a time of, of national crisis due to the death of King Uzziah. But that vision of God really transformed him. Let's go back as we close back to 1939 when Winston Churchill had just become Prime Minister of our nation and Britain had found itself at war. King George VI was on the throne at that time and that Christmas in his Christmas address to the nation King George pointed the nation to God and encouraged them to seek refuge in God at such a difficult time. He did so using the words of a poem. Here are the words. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That will be safer for you than light and better than a known way. Britain at that time had a king who was prepared to point the nation to God, who was prepared to see that in a time of darkness and crisis, the nation needed to have a vision of God. How we need leaders like that today who would point our nation to God. Our nation badly needs to see that vision of God and who he is. But it's through as well that we also personally need to have that vision of God. Like Isaiah, we need to see God in all of his glory. And in response, we need to see our own sinfulness and seek God's forgiveness for that sin. When we do, we will discover that our God is a forgiving God who will receive all those who turn to him. He has not changed. God is still on the throne. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are in control of all things. You are the God whom Isaiah saw at that time, the God who is still on the throne, the God who is holy and awesome and powerful. Help us whenever we feel fearful, whenever we feel afraid, to realise that we have a God in heaven who is in control, for whom nothing uh, takes by surprise. Help us to turn to him and to seek his assurance, his grace, his peace and his forgiveness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello again. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And we certainly hope that you've taken something away from this service. Um, it's God's word reminds us that his word doesn't return to him void but it, it accomplishes everything it, it, he set it out to do and if you've heard this service this morning I hope that there was something in it for you if there's anything else you would like to know any questions you might have uh, anything at all uh, you can certainly check the website or uh, get in contact with any vestry person uh, at any time one of the other ways uh, that we're going to uh, try and keep in contact with you um, is that there's a little prayer group that's going to start now there's only about no more than six of them who are obviously able to meet and they'll have to do that outside um, but they've been meeting particularly for prayer for those who aren't well for those for those who are sick so if you know somebody or, or even for yourself if you'd like them somebody to pray uh, for any situation where, where people aren't well uh, you can do that by just contacting Shirley and Shirley will pass that on to that little group uh, and those who aren't well will be prayed for there. You remember that at the start of the service I said that we uh, have some good points and bad points about uh, the way that we have to meet. Uh, one of the drawbacks that we have obviously found uh, and some people have been asking is that we, we are not able to give financially the way we would have before. So in order to try and help with that, there's some literature going out this week. Uh, it really has to do with our gift day which I mentioned in a wee moment. 
But on that information, uh, there are different ways to give uh, by direct debit, by draft, by check, or even by cash. But the details are there. Um, uh, and even if it's just a one off payment uh, for gift day or something you'd like to give more regularly, you'll get the details on that. So uh, check that out when it comes around this week. As I mentioned, it is gift day next week. We're really looking forward to that. John, John Dinan, has agreed to take our service next week. There'll even be a little note from John uh, in the literature you'll receive uh, just to get us thinking along the lines for next week. So we really ask you, uh, join us next week uh, for our gift day, uh, even though, again, we'll not be meeting in church. All the little things that are happening this week, uh, we'll have our midweek again. Um, uh, and don't forget, uh, this, if there's somebody uh, we need to pray for for the sick, contact Shirley. Uh, our last hymn uh, will be Holy, Holy, Holy. And just before we, we start that, um, I want to just leave you with a blessing from Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to him be all praise now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.